Well, good morning to all of you shooters out there. Fortune Cookie 45LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And this video is about the deeper reasons why I haven't annealed my cartridge cases in all these years. And a lot of you do like to anneal cases, but here are some reasons why I don't anneal that I couldn't share in the last video because it's another tier of thinking that perhaps is best for more experienced shooters to talk about over coffee. So to borrow an idea from Thorzak777, we're going to have a cup of joe here and talk about some other reasons that are kind of like more, um, more deeper reasons why annealing uh, might be a problem and unless we can overcome those problems, annealing might not be what we want to do. And of course a lot of it depends on the purpose for our ammo. If we're hunting, then why not anneal? Because all you need is minute of heart lung area for the game you're hunting and you're good to go. But if you're trying to shoot the smallest groups possible, then can annealing get us there? So tell you more about my friend Nick the bench rest shooter. He has a custom rifle in what he calls his deuce. And he shoots that rifle twice a week. And the rest of the week he's scheming and working on his reloads so he can go to the next range session and shoot again. Twice a week he shoots. And so he told me, well the first thing you need to do is get yourself 200 rounds of good brass. So you ask, why does he say get 200 rounds of good brass? I happen to have 300 rounds here, but 200 winds up being shot to fire form and it becomes once fired brass. And then we load our factory brass to see what kind of accuracy we get. And then our once fired brass, we're going to try and tune to shoot the, the most accurate load that we can find. And that's done with a ladder system as you've seen on other videos. So this is once fired brass. And after we load it and work up our loads, it becomes twice fired brass. And then the twice fired brass becomes three times fired brass. And all of this moves on in the same lot. So we, we keep on getting once fire brass by shooting this brass. And we've got a good load with our once fire brass. It becomes twice fire brass. And that, that keeps on going until all of our brass becomes twice fire brass. So as you've seen, I've got here the factory new Lapua brass loaded with a load that I know will give me 0.690 inch groups. And that happens to be 44.7 grains of 4064 powder with the SMK bullet. Now, we've shot this and it becomes twice fired brass. So when I shoot this, I'll have once fired brass and I've worked up a good accuracy load for my once fired brass. And that happens to be 44.4 grains of 4064 powder with the SMK bullet and a COL that I've already worked out for my Savage Model 11 VT rifle. So once all those get shot through the once fired and, they, and all this brass becomes twice fired, then I've got twice fired brass. So why does Nick keep going to the range like twice a week? And the reason is... Once all of this becomes twice fire brass, then we load the 44.4 grains with the SMK bullet in our twice fire brass, and we've got to shoot loads to see if we get the same accuracy level as the once fire brass. If we get the same accuracy performance with twice fire brass as our once fire brass, then we are good to go for the whole bunch of brass with the twice fired to become the three times fire brass. So we've got to figure out whether the three times fire brass will shoot the same accuracy performance as our twice fire brass. And the same thing repeats into the fourth time we reload 
and when we reload that, we get five times fire breaths. Then we gotta start thinking, do we go for, for a sixth re reloading? And a lot of times we can. In fact, some people say that we can take Lapua breaths and shoot as many as 10 times and get good performance. Well, maybe so, maybe not. We'll see. But at some point, the brass becomes hard, it becomes brittle, we might start getting some case neck splits, this kind of thing, and we got to start thinking about annealing. Well, are you enjoying your coffee? I've drunk some of this now, and time to take another sip. Oh, that's good Joe there. Anyway, so now the decision has been made whether we anneal or not. And in my case, I tend to take the brass and retire it and get brand new brass. So you see, if you're competing in a bench rest match, what happens is you got your good load that you've got your once fire brass, and you've got a lot of once, once fire brass. So you've tested that load, and now you take the same ammo to compete with because you've got reliability there. You wouldn't take twice or three times fire brass and use the same load as you have with once fire brass because you're not sure that you've got the same accuracy performance unless you test this. And that's why Nick said start with 200 rounds of good brass. You don't want to use bad brass, you want to use good consistent brass and Lapua gives you that extra consistency, you gotta pay for that of course. Plus you have the flash holes are already taken care of, you don't have to deburr flash holes. Now I didn't show you my 223 brass on the last video because the video is going to be too long. But with my 223, I'm not taking any chances. I've got loads that are shooting in the fours. That means .4 something something groups at 100 yards. And the reason why I have so much brass is because someday I'm going to get back out into the environment fields. And when I do that, I'm going to need lots of ammo. So you see, buying the loaded rounds by Hornady in these 50 round cartons is a great deal because it costs the same to buy the loaded ammo as it does to buy the reloading brass. So I've got the brass and the fire form loads all ready to go for the same price. Now, I'm not taking any chances, so I bought all this at the same time. And you'll notice that Hornady's got the, the product number stamped on here, 80255, but that's not the lot number. The lot number is right here. And if you look closely, you'll see that that lot number, get that in focus. This is lot number 31506.73. And you see, it's all the same, so I bought all this at the same time, so we're, we're good to go. So you see, all 300 of these rounds will move on to become once fired, and this happens to be once fired because I had more that I've already been shooting. So this is once fired here, and then here's the second reloading, and this is unprocessed. Here's second reloading processed. And then here is third time reloading and it's processed. So this, these will all be moving right along. So you see I've got a good supply of once fired that I know is reliable for the loads that I'm getting the four tenths plus inch groups at 100 yards and more of this brass is going to become once fired. Now I'm doing this because my friends Doug, Dwayne, and Ray that we used to go out and shoot ground squirrels out in Williams and Weed, California. They're all approaching retirement age and their families are all growing older and someday we're gonna wanna get out there and relive our past and do that varmint shooting again, I'm sure. And when we do that, I'll be ready. But fortune cookie, what's this gotta do with annealing or not annealing? And now we've got to the point where we can discuss that and that is now we've gotten five reloads, say, for instance, and it's time to think about annealing. So we still have some coffee here. Let's go ahead and have a sip, and now we're going to talk about some of the deeper 
thinking behind a kneeling or not. So notice, a lot of military ammo shows it's a kneeling. So you see here, this 30-06, the kneeling line, and then look at this 308 here, the annealing line. Here is the Lake City that's also got the reloading line, but notice the reloading line on this 30-06 round is not the same level as the 30-06 ammo in this M1 Garand clip. Different level. And then even steel case, you can see that there's a little hint of annealing along this, and th this is with Bulgarian Bulgarian 7.62x54 ammo right here. But notice how consistent that annealing is. You can also almost draw a straight line right across there. Now nothing can be spoken of in generalities because here you see some military 303 ammo and you can't quite see the annealing. It's there, but you can't quite see it. And then this is Chinese 7.62x54R ammo, and you can't see the annealing hint there either, but it might very well be there. Now with our excellent commercial ammo from Winchester, Remington, Federal, CCI, these kind of things, all of our commercial ammo you don't see the annealing lines, but it was done. The reason why you don't see it is that they polish it off in their finishing procedures for good sale and ability to get maybe a little higher price for the ammo. But again, generalizations can't be made because here you see commercial 458 Winchester brass made by Hornady, and you see the annealing line is right there. Notice again, you can almost draw a straight edge right across there. It's done that consistently. Well, annealing has to be done consistently because if it's not done consistently in terms of the degree of annealing, the temperature of annealing, if it's not done consistently, you'll have brass that has different hardness and you got problems with accuracy, especially if you're trying to reload precision ammo. Once again, if you're going to go ahead and shoot ammo that's minute of heart lung area on a deer, then if the temperature's not quite the same on all of them or the degree of annealing's not the quite the same on all of them, doesn't matter. But if you're trying to shoot groups that are sub MOA, it does matter. So part of the reason that I haven't annealed all these years is because I was thinking that, well, how do you get control over the temperature? And how do you get control over the degree of annealing that you're doing, whether you're knocking them over in the water or this kind of thing, or you're holding the case in your hand and hoping you don't burn yourself, or now people are using sockets and an electric drill, but are you spinning at the same speed? Are you, are you holding the same point on the cartridge case in the annealing? Is everything consistent? And how do you tell? How do we have any measurements on the case hardness or the temperature of the brass as you're annealing? We don't have a PID for brass. I'm sure the factories have all that. And they have machines that do the annealing to get that straight line annealing. And so that's why in the last video I'm thinking, can we develop something, some kind of system that we can more consistently do our annealing? Or can we go ahead and use what uh, Thorzax 777 is advocating, and that is the annealies machine that anneals the case with an electric motor that's turning so it's consistent, and the, the placement and the placement of the case against the annealing torch is consistent? Maybe the machine is the answer. And if so, we can go ahead and use something like that and, and get some annealing that's consistent. Because our end desire is, in all this, to shoot our fifth loading of brass, and then that goes to the annealing process, and after we anneal, we load again, and our next groupings are the same performance as the brass before the annealing. 
And if we get that, then we are good to go. Now, if we don't get that, then we've got to do our ladder work again and work up a load again to find accurate shooting load for that newly annealed brass. And if we can get the same consistent type of groups, then our annealing is consistent also. And that's a backward test validation for the annealing process. If we're not getting that, after you anneal and you can't get consistent performance after the annealing, then the annealing is up to question. Certainly anywhere along the way between first fired, second fired, etc., anywhere along the way where our performance does not match up, then we've got to do a ladder testing again to find the next load that will shoot accurately with that run of brass in that grouping of shooting. No wonder my friend Nick goes to the range twice a week shooting his bench rest stuff. It's an ongoing discovery. So sorry this video was long, but it really gets more deeply into the thinking about annealing and I uh, hope this helps. Uh, but I'm sure there are solutions out there and if we can find them and they work in our rifles because again, our own rifles are individual and uh, we have to determine what works for them. Bye for now. Take care and good shooting to all of you.